Hi, thank you so much for joining me in this series of videos about gas laws. My goal throughout this series is to help you understand the behavior of gases conceptually, at the molecular level, and mathematically. I think they are just so practical in life. I, I hope you can already see the implications as we move forward. What we want to start with is a theory of gases. Now this theory is called the kinetic molecular theory of gases and gases that follow this theory that are explained well by this theory are called ideal gases. So for most of these videos we're going to be talking about ideal gases and those gases are defined as behaving according to the premises I'm going to lay out. Now, this happens when the gas is under high temperature conditions, lots of energy for motion, just like students tend to behave more ideally when they have a lot of energy, and low pressure situations. Again, back to the student analogy, when you have a lot of pressure on you as a student, uh, things tend to slide, work gets sloppy, you become stressed, over-emotional, you're not behaving very ideally. Now, if there's not much pressure on you, you're not taking too many AP classes or IB classes, or you're not working too many hours at work, you've got a lower pressure environment, you can focus a little bit more. So, gases that are at relatively, depends on the gas, what the exact values are, high temperatures and low pressures are ideal gases and they behave according to the kinetic molecular theory of gases. So let's look at these premises. The first premise is that a gas consists of molecules whose separation is much larger than the size of the container. The gas molecules are very, very far apart and the container is huge compared to the volume taken up by the space. So the gases are playing around in mostly empty space. Their volume is negligible compared to the volume of the container. We will ignore it. And so we're going to say they're, you, know, you can almost think of them as little, uh, as little point particles with negligible volume. You can't say no volume because matter is, has mass and takes up space. But it's so small, we're not going to consider it. Particles move in straight line paths. I mean, there's nothing to cause them to curve. They can't think. Um, so they're just going to move like billiard balls until they hit something. And they're going to move in random directions. There's nothing drawing them in one direction or another within the container. Particles collide frequently with the sides of the container and less frequently with each other. That's what the pressure is going to be. Pressure is equal to a force impinging on the sides of the containers per unit area. And so those collisions are going to have a force associated with them. Anything that will increase the magnitude of the force will alter the pressure. They're impinging within a unit area. So if we increase force, we increase pressure. If we decrease the unit area over which the particles are colliding, we will also increase the pressure. Okay, all of our collisions, we're making this as an assumption, a premise of a basic theory, all collisions are elastic. Energy can be transferred, but there is no net loss or net gain of energy. And finally, here on this page, um, gas particles do not attract nor repel one another. Gas molecules do not experience any intermolecular forces 
between neighboring particles. So if you think of air, air is made of nitrogen and oxygen, some water vapor, carbon dioxide, some argon, and so forth. It's not like oxygen sees nitrogen and is like, whoa, I want to impress nitrogen, so I'm going to hit the sides of the walls of the container harder. No, oxygen is oblivious to the presence of the nitrogen, at least under these conditions of ideal gas behavior that we are talking about. And then finally, and a very, very important premise, is about temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. So the average kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature of that gas sample, meaning as the average kinetic energy increases, the temperature increases. Now, you notice that it said average kinetic energy. These molecules, these have a kinetic energy that is distributed over a velocity. So kinetic energy is, if you remember from, I don't know, 7th, 8th grade science, 1 half mass times velocity squared. You always want to pay close attention to what that x-axis is. Do you notice there's a distribution here? That distribution is called a Boltzmann distribution. It's a statistical distribution. And I want you to notice what happens as temperature increases. So this is lower than this temperature. Notice that the peak height shifts to higher velocity and higher kinetic energy molecules. Notice that the distribution spreads out over a broader range. So there's a much broader range of velocities. Okay. And it typically will tail off a little higher. So there's three things. It shifts right as you increase temperature. The peak height is going to shift to the right. It's going to be lower. But I want you to notice that the area under each of these curves is the same. Okay, but it's spread out more, so the height, maximum height, is going to be lower. The number of molecules at that maximum height will be lower, and it typically is going to tail off higher. And that's the distribution of kinetic energy. Now, what this diagram is showing you is a particle diagram of molecules hitting the sides of the containers and bouncing off. And this is what we want to work on in our understanding is to be able to understand these particle diagrams. One of the things that is more challenging to do is to try to envision speed or velocity. So sometimes you'll see that arrow be longer or maybe shorter depending on the average velocity of the molecule. All right, so we're going to work on these, but pay close attention to the molecules hitting the sides of the container. Because anytime you've got more molecules hitting the sides of the container, or if they're hitting with more force, you have an increased pressure situation. All right, thanks for joining me for this quick introduction. I really appreciate your time, and good luck with your study of gas laws.